John, verse 15. John 21, verse 15. So when they had dined, praise God, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said unto him, Yes, Lord, you know I now love you. And he said unto him, Feed my lambs. He gave him a calling. He gave him something to do. Right there. And he said to him again in the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? I'm telling you right now, as I'm reading this, he's asking you the same thing. Do you love him? Are you going to let everything hold you back? Are you going to let things hold you back? Or are you going to feed his sheep? Feed his lambs? He said unto him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Remember, Peter denied him three times. <laughs> <laughs> and now Jesus is asking him three times. Many people go into the Greek and say there's three, three types of different meanings of love and agape. And let me tell you, I'm telling you, Simon denied him three times is the reason Jesus is asking him if he loves him three times. And he's asking us the same question because many of us profess to say something. We profess to know something. We profess that we love him. And the whole time inside of our hearts, we love something else a little bit more. That's why he's asking every single one of us with this scripture right here is he's asking Peter, do you love me? Because you're going to have to make that decision. There's going to come a time in your individual life where that thing that you have put before the Lord, and it's going to be taken away. And if you don't love Him, if you love something before Him, you're going to get mad at Him. I, I'm telling you, it's true. Mm -hmm. Because you put something before God. If you put something before God, it will be shaken. I can tell you from experience, when I put my wife before God, bang, wreck after wreck after wreck, and almost death after death, she was, it was shaken. I'm talking for five to six years. And everybody said, man, she's a bad driver. <laughs> and y'all's insurance, man, they must not like y'all. They just spent out $100,000 on cameras. <laughs> Thought I was the richest bug man in town. I had a brand new car. <laughs> Your wife must be crazy. You know, there's something in Daryl's heart. He was saying, Daryl, do you love me? Oh, sure I do, Lord. You know I do. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. If you're going to take this from me, I, I don't know about that, Jesus. I, I don't like that. <clears throat> How many people do that? Oh, yeah. It, it may be a house. It may be a car. It, it may be your boyfriend. It may be your child. Well, I'm supposed to love my children. Yeah, but you're not supposed to love anything more than you love Jesus Christ. Amen. And if that child is taken from you, because he is his life. He can bring that child back to him if he wants to. He can bring that person that he brought to you to marry back to him because it's his life. It's not yours. You don't control it. He does. He's God. Guess what? If they do that and you love them more, it's going to tear you apart. And then you have a problem. That's why he said, love me more than anything, more than your mother, your father, your wife, your sister, your brother. Your brothers and sisters in church, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And he's asking him a third time, Peter, do you love me? Mm -hmm. And Peter was grieved because he had said unto him a third time, do you love me? And he said unto him, Lord, you know all things. Praise God. And that's the right answer. <laughs> You know that I love you. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. He's telling him that he's going to go do the calling that I've called you to do. Be obedient. If you love me, you'll be obedient. You know how many people are not faithful because they really don't love Jesus? They love the church type of deal and social club and, and meeting new people or just coming and having the appearance of, of God but denying the power thereof. They love to do, but they actually don't love the Lord inside their heart with all their heart, mind, and soul. Because we're supposed to actually be here for one another. He said, feed my sheep. You know, you don't have to be a pastor or a preacher or anything like that to be able to feed sheep. Do you know that y'all converse with one another 
when there's a break and when church is over and everything else, you know you help one another. Mm -hmm. And so when you don't come and you don't care if you don't come and you make some crazy excuse, well, I forgot. Don't know. I didn't know church was going on tonight. It's <laughs> Sunday, but I just didn't know. <laughs> I just didn't know. <laughs> church is going on. You know when the Lord's called you to do something. Just like He's telling people, Peter, right now, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do what I've called you to do. Quit messing around. Really? <laughs> oh, because when the heat gets turned on, the devil's trying to sift you right now. And I'm telling you, the heat is on right now, and he's trying to sift me. And, and, and you're going to have to come down. It's all going to come down to that one thing. Love. Mm -hmm. The love for the Lord Jesus Christ. All the protection in Psalm 91 comes down to one thing. And it wasn't tithing. You know, giving to the church is great. It wasn't, it wasn't just church attendance. It, it wasn't just protecting the Lord's Supper. It wasn't just reading the Bible. It wasn't even praying on the knees. It was if you had a passionate love in your heart for the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, mind, and soul, and then no plague would come near your dwelling. Mm -hmm. And then a thousand will follow on this side, ten thousand on your right side, but none shall come near your dwelling in Psalm 91. You have a hedge of protection because your love is deep for Him. Amen. That's why He kept asking Peter, are you sure? And He's asking every one of us tonight, do you love Him? As I turn this music on, evaluate your own heart. Because there may come a day, and it may come real soon, where one of your neighbors, one of your family members, they start asking you about Jesus. What are you going to tell them? Are you going to say, well, I don't know much about the Lord Jesus. I don't know. Or are you going to say, well, come on with me. Let's talk about Jesus. <laughs> That's my Savior in whom I love. Mm, I, I, I want to talk about Jesus. But you know, you'd be surprised at how many Christians walk out and do not want to talk about the Lord Jesus. Or ask, they, they, some of them don't even have nothing to say. At all. You ask them, they have nothing. The Bible says you're supposed to be prepared in season and out of season to give account from where your hope comes from. Amen. 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 Oh, praise God. Do you love Him? Good night, folks.